Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. What's up? What's up? Winning Cures Everything College Football Week 7 Preview Show. Along with spread picks, etc., etc. I'm Gary. And I'm Chris. Ah. <sighs> I turned it down too much. There we go. There we go. Get that sweet jam playing. As I said, this is the Week 7 Preview Show for college football. We got some massive, massive matchups, name-wise, anyway. Uh, lots of massive spreads, but massive names as well, which should make it entertaining nonetheless. Whew, good gracious. What a uh, What a fantastic week. Last week... This one ought to be good. Next week looks like it could be kind of eh, um, but then we pick right back up. October is my favorite football month. It's a really favorite sports month, right? NBA gets going. It's just my favorite month. I wish the NBA didn't get going. There is a there's a crisp in the air yeah. right now. It, it is the best weather year-round. Yes. Uh, you and I will be at Northwestern Ohio State next Friday. It's going to be yes, a good sir. time. So, it, of course... Ohio State with a bye week this week to get ready for that game. I don't know that they necessarily they need, need one. that. <laughs> That's when you want to spend your bye week. Believe that. Uh, in Baton Rouge this week, did you see the high on Saturday at 73? Oh, it's 73. Oh, it's so, so good. I, oh, I, I, at, this is one of those weekends where I wish I lived closer. Yeah. I mean, it's it's only, what, six and a half hours? Yeah. That's a little yeah. ways. I mean, it, it, for driving. Well, and it's, Well, you can't fly there. I mean, not to Baton Rouge, but you can fly to New Orleans. And then from there, it's only, what, about an hour? That doesn't help me. No, not really. By the time you did all that, you could have just drove there. Yeah, probably. Hour and a half in the airport, flight, hour and a half out of the airport, and another hour and a half drive there. you got to rent a car. God yeah. That's how long that's going to take. Yeah, you're right about that. You're right about that. All right, you yeah. can find out more information about us over at winningcureseverything.com. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure you hit that subscribe button for us. We would definitely appreciate that. Leave some comments. Tell us what you like, what you don't like. Tell us what your picks are. Uh, tell us if you think we're going the wrong way on something because God knows we could use the advice. Yes, Maybe sir. not Chris after his 5-0-1 gambling week last week. Uh, and you can find those picks for this week over on the Gambling Picks podcast, of course. That will come out on Thursday. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, it's already here. It's already there. So we, we got that thing out. Um, the show brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi. Our friends in the Delta. Yes, sir. The South's premier sports gambling destination. They've got six incredible sports books. You can find more information on all of them over at tunicatravel.com. They got good stuff going on down there. We, we will vouch for them. I'm telling you, it's a fun time every time we go, and we are there frequently. Chris won a truck note last week on the Patriots. So, <laughs> so definitely I, a good I did, time. I did do that. Believe that. I, I knew you were going to put a bunch of money on that. Truck note's been paid. Believe that. Uh, let's go ahead and, and fire this bad boy off. Are you ready? Yeah, come on. Let's go. Florida. The Gators go down to Baton the Bayou. Rouge. Baton Rouge. Yeah. LSU, a 13-point favorite. The total is 54 and a half. 7 p.m. game on ESPN. Now, typically, the biggest game of the weekend will be ABC, CBS, Sometimes it's on Fox at 11 a.m. Uh, very rarely does ESPN, the actual cable network, get to host the big-time game. This time, they are doing it up. It's in Tiger Stadium. It's in Death Valley. Here's some numbers on it. Come on. Florida, 4-1 and one straight up and against the spread. Their last five as an underdog. They are 5-0 and oh straight up, 4-1 and one against the spread on the road under Dan Mullen. LSU. 12-3 and three against the spread in their last 15 against the SEC. However, Coach O, 1-2 straight up, 0-3 against the spread against Florida. Now, that includes his year as an interim coach. LSU, with less and with Coach O, 0-5 against the spread in their last five against Dan Mullen. Now, that's at Mississippi State and at Florida. Florida, number 100 in the country in third down percentage. I think that this is a... A major issue here because they cannot convert on third down. LSU, number three in the country in that metric. They're number 11 on defense 
on stopping third downs. Florida is number 12 in defensive third down ratio. Uh, the line opened up at minus 13 and a half. It moved to minus 14, then it dropped to minus 12 and a half. It is back up to 13 again. The analytics say that LSU will win this game by 7.61 points. I don't know how much I trust the analytics on this. Um, I did take Florida on this, so I, I'll go ahead and say that. I've, I've got Florida to cover and LSU to win the game. I think all of those statistics from prior years do not matter. Don't matter. Oh, no, I know you're, not a, you're and, not a big fan of the trends. And the reason why they don't matter. Because those are completely different teams. LSU hasn't had an offense that looked like this in my lifetime and in the history of the school. Yeah. They are the highest scoring offense in the history of college football over five-game stretch. Yeah. That, that is nothing like the previous years. So all of those Dan Mullen team stats against Coach O, LS, or LSU – don't matter because they haven't played a, a school like this. They haven't played an offense like this. Their defensive stats are really good. Do I think LSU's going to hang 66th on them like they've done everybody else? No, I do not. I do not. But they haven't played an offense this good all year. True. So their offensive, their defensive stats are going to go down. Secondly, outside of Auburn, this is going to be the best defense they've played all year. Yeah, I think you're probably right. They get to play them in Death Valley, not in the safety of home. So their offense is going to look far worse, which isn't great to begin with. True. I know that I am biased, but I think we're going to kick their ass. I also think there's a whole lot of comeuppance coming in this game because Dan Mullen and Florida has had LSU's number. I got to tell you something, man. This is a really nasty rivalry. <laughs> Yeah, like they, it, these the, two places, they don't like one another. It's it, it wasn't this bad like four or five years ago, and then that the the hurricane thing happened, and they had to move the games around, and man, it has gotten LSU wild. got so screwed in that situation financially, and they are one of the poorer not not fan bases but poorer state schools in the country. Yeah, and definitely in the SEC. Yeah, just state money and funds going to the school. They're a poor school. Um, now, their boosters give plenty of money. That's different. It, it's just, it hurts when you give them two days to sell tickets to a game and then say, okay, that counts now as your home game. We're going to give them two home games with perfect weather and they can sell them out. And, and now everything's even, right? No, it's not. And the way it went down, I thought was shady. And I thought was bad. And a lot of other LSU people did too. And it's just a thing where we, we feel like we just keep getting screwed by the SEC commission's office. And 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 some of it's I don't think it's poignant. I don't think they're out to get LSU. I, I'm not Carvel, okay? Yeah. But but I do think that we just fall on the short end of incompetence a lot. Um and I also think that Dan Mullen's really, really good at finding his rivals and pushing buttons. Yeah, he's yeah, he he's done that. He has definitely done that. He so, does it. He does it mostly with Georgia. Well, that's because that's his biggest rival. But this one has gotten. But but yeah, really nasty. That's right. And, really and, nasty. And I and I I think you want to get nasty with people. Be real careful. Yeah. Be be real careful. Those sweet people in Georgia is one thing. You you come down to the swamp. We go down to the Everglades. Hey, yeah. These people are different. Yeah, you got that right. You got that a hundred percent right. All right, let's move off of that one. Let's move into. Red River. Oklahoma, a 10, what is it, 11? 11 point line. All right. Oklahoma minus 11 against Texas. Now, this is the 50 50 split game. The That's total, right. total on this is 75 and a half. That is absolutely absurd. Just It's a lot, but I don't know that it's. Too I don't many. think it's wrong. I don't, I don't know that it's too many. I, I, I think it might not be enough. Uh, but I 11 a.m. on Fox, it's in the Cotton Bowl Stadium in Dallas, Texas. Yards per point margin. I talked about this in the NFL one, the NFL gambling picks. Oklahoma, number 22, Texas, number 18. Yards per play margin, however. Oklahoma, number one, Texas, number 58. That's a, that's a big difference. Turnover margin, here's another one. 
because obviously turnovers mean a lot. Now, there's a lot of luck that goes into it, et cetera. That's right. But if you can't take care of the ball, that can be a problem. Oklahoma is number 85 in the country in turnover margin. Wow, really? I don't yeah. know. I didn't realize their offense has turned the ball over so much. Turned it over, and, they, and their defense and they, is not taking away the ball yeah, at all. They're not creating turnovers. I knew that. I I did know that. I'm shocked that their offense is turning the ball over. So Texas much. number fourteen. Yeah, number fourteen. I, no, I, I knew that Tom Herman teams are, are they're going to protect the football. Texas is Man, six and sorry. one against the spread. Their last seven against Oklahoma. Texas number one in third down percentage. Oklahoma is number ten in opponents' third down percentage. So that should be an interesting matchup to watch when it hits third down and Texas got the ball. And Texas has done really well in this rivalry, right? Yeah. I mean, that the, the last couple of years since Tom has been there, I don't care about anything before that, but since Herman's been there, they, they've they won this game. Yeah. They, uh, they've they done a pretty good job, especially over the last couple of years, but, I mean, they also beat Oklahoma when Charlie Strong was the coach. Like, it's they get up for this game like no other game on their schedule. That's right. Um, now, on the other side of the third down thing, Oklahoma's number eight in third down percentage on offense. Texas... Number 77 in opponent's third down percentage. So that will be, if Texas cannot stop them on third down, that's all she wrote. That's the ball game. Uh, for, the line opened up at minus 9.5. It quickly moved up to 11, which is where it sits now. Oklahoma, the analytics have got Oklahoma winning this by 9.8 points. Oklahoma has not played anybody like Texas. Correct. Not even close. Texas, on the other hand, has played West Virginia on the road. They have played LSU, uh, who I think is a better team than Oklahoma. I agree with that. Um, and Texas held their own. I, now they I don't think home. I don't think many people agree with that, but I agree with that. Um, I, as far as picks go, you know what? I'm gonna I'm ask you your picks first. What? Who? Who have you got for this? I like taking dogs. I hate taking chalk, but I, I, I honestly think that Oklahoma is going to beat them. I think that Jalen is just a so much different quarterback than the last couple of quarterbacks at Oklahoma that Texas was able to control. I can understand it. I, I, I really think that. I think LSU... I don't know that Texas has been able to control them. Well, they won the games. I mean, they... Yeah, they but, were able but, to get stops when they had to get stops. I don't know that they get stops know, at la- all. Last year was 48-45. to 45. That's not... But that's, that's... At some point in time, Oklahoma's punting. At yeah, had to, had to get more stops than, you than know, the other one. So, so you made a stop when you had to. And and I think that matters, man. I don't. I maybe I'm overvaluing Jalen, but I I think right now college football. Not I don't care about their pro careers. I don't care about anything else. Jalen looks better than Baker did, and than than Murray did. I think, I think Texas, he's more physically dominant and overpowering when he has to be. I think Texas did not care nearly as much about the LSU game as they do about this game. Ooh, I disagree with that completely. I I think they absolutely cared about that game. I'm not as saying... As much as you can care about that game. Game day was there. The entire nation was watching. And this yeah, is... They, every, there was their opportunity to say, Texas is back. And it's real. It's not fake. It's not bullshit. It's not we beat a rivalry. It We are back. I think they wanted that game just as much as this. I'm going to take Texas to cover here. I think 11 might be too much. Wouldn't surprise me. Wouldn't um, surprise me at all. Because, I mean, a 41-31 to 31 game gets you the cover. You're right. A 10-point line gets you the cover, and you're exactly right. I and don't I don't that, see Oklahoma I don't know that we're get, I don't know that we're getting 10 points at all in the sense of I, I think I think Oklahoma is scoring touchdowns. Uh, I think they're scoring. you, you got to, at some point in time, stop them from scoring touchdowns. I'm going to take Oklahoma to win straight up. I'm taking Texas plus 11. You taking Oklahoma minus 11? Yeah, I'll take Oklahoma minus 11. Okay. Okay, that makes sense. I wouldn't bet this game at that number, but but making a pick, I got to make a pick. I'm I'm going to lay them. That's I I think I think I might bet Texas plus the 11. Right. If if the line keeps crawling up, I'll definitely do it. I don't know if uh, it's going to keep crawling up. I think we've settled in where it's probably going to be. It'll sit at 11. I don't I don't know while. that people are going to stay piling on Oklahoma. No, you're probably right. Next up, we're staying in Texas. Okay. We're going to College Station. Kyle Field. Alabama comes in a 17-point favorite at Texas A&M. The total is 61 on this. It's 2.30 p.m. on CBS. A&M 11-2 against the spread their last 13 at home. Alabama 0-2 against the spread against A&M the last two years. Turnover margin? Again, big one here. 
Alabama number six in the country, A&M number 79. As far as points per play margin, Alabama number one, A&M number 54. Yards per point margin, Alabama number seven, A&M number 52. Yards per play margin, Alabama number two, A&M number 54. And yet, even with all of that stuff, I still think A&M hangs in this ballgame. Yeah, I do too. I think that they have been circling this one. Now, both teams are coming off of a bye here. Uh, Alabama's starting center looks like he's going to be out for this game. Uh, So they've been... They have been trying out, or not trying out, but working, working it, with yeah. Landon Dickerson, the uh, the Florida State guard transfer, five star guard uh, grad transfer, um, and he is going to be at center. So, if it was any other member of the offensive line, I would tell you that Alabama is three or four deep at five star guys, and it doesn't matter. Center's a little different because he touches the ball every snap, and he's got to get it to the quarterback every snap. And they run a lot of shotgun right now. Yeah, it, so it, it's, it's not just, just handing the ball back. Yes, there's a there's a different feel and a different there's a there's a relationship between quarterback and center, and I do think that with, I wonder if they knew in the bye week he wasn't going to play, and have they been working on this for two weeks? The information just came out this week, but they legally only had to get the information out this week. Yeah. So, if they've known for two weeks, I feel fine. I'm not worried about that position being the reason that, that I would go A and M, but um, if not, that I think that could be a factor. The line opened up at 18, and it moved down to 17. Now, some books you can even get it at 16 and a half. That's right, you can get it. You can get it at uh, if you want to take Bama. You can shop around and find a smaller number. I like A and M in this spot. Very rarely do we see a line move against Alabama. No, that just doesn't happen. Especially it, not one that's that's this short. I'm with you. I think Auburn went in there, beat them up physically. I think Alabama's defense isn't as dominant as it's been. Like we've said, Alabama and LSU just are different teams than what they've been over the past years. Yeah, and and I think A and M can put some points on the. Oh yeah, I agree. And and with that being said, I believe that, you know, you you just are gonna you're gonna get a, a different kind of game than what they're used to. You're trying to keep it within 17, 16, whatever. Yeah. I I think I would take A and M in the points. That's I'm I'm taking Bama to win straight up, but I I do think this. Yeah, will I don't be a two I don't think I can call it the upset. I would love for there to be. An upset. I just don't see that happening, um, but uh, but yeah. All right, so we're we're both doing the same. I thing. think they can keep it close. Yeah, I think I think this is a. T- I mean, the last time they went down there two years ago, like Alabama looked like the best team in the country, and they won twenty four to nine. Or I, I also to, believe that no, twenty. If Bama came in was. and played poorly and won, there's nothing Nick Saban would want more. Oh, a hundred percent. Like like he needs a game where they look like crap. And give me, he needs the the Clemson UNC game. Yes, badly. The yeah. fans won't want to see it, but Nick would want nothing more for it to happen right here in the middle of the season. Oh yeah. Before they go on this gauntlet run of LSU's going to come up, then Auburn at the end of the year, and and you just gotta make sure you're plowing through, playing good. You you don't want it against LSU because you can get got, and 100%. Auburn because you can get got. And you don't want it against Tennessee because they're a big rival, even though we we just don't think there's anywhere close to that. This is the game where if you're Saban, you say, if I could get pissed off at these guys, this is the week I want to do it. Yeah, I think this is a good spot for it. I do too. Good spot for it. All right, moving on from there, let's move over to Kinnick Stadium. Iowa, a four-point dog hosting Penn State. Penn State has looked unfreaking believable lately. The total, 40 and a half. That's a super low total. 6.30 p.m. on ABC. This is the other big-time night game. Another ranked matchup. Penn State, 3-2 and two against the spread as a road favorite the last two years. Iowa, 3-1 and one against the spread. 2-2 two and two straight up as a home dog in their last four. However, as, a, as an underdog, overall, Iowa, 1-7 and seven against the spread in their last eight in that role. Iowa is 0-5 straight up, 1-4 against the spread against Penn State in their last five matchups. Now, remember, these two teams do not play every year. They're on opposite sides of the Big Ten. That's right. Turnover margin, Penn State number 53, Iowa number 44, so not a a big difference there. Points per play margin, 
However, Penn State number four, Iowa number 20, yards per play margin, Penn State number six, Iowa number 29. The analytics have Penn State winning this one by 5.81 points here. Now, that includes the uh, home field advantage, et cetera. So, uh, all the extra metrics that go into that. Okay. The line opened at minus two and a half. It moved to minus five. It has now settled on four. What say you? I'm torn on this one. I'm not. I've, I, I, three weeks in a row, I've bet against Penn State. Got smoked week one, or not week one, but the first time. Pushed last week. I think I was getting me to cover this week. <laughs> I really do. <laughs> I went home you're, at you're night. Going, you're going back. Iowa at home at night is not a fun place to play. No, you're right. It, you're right. it is not. That place is going to be rocking. They're going to be up for this game. I know Penn State is loaded with talent. I know that they are better at every position on the field than Iowa, dude-wise. I do wonder if maybe I'm selling Iowa short because, I think, of, the, because of the Michigan game. Michigan, oh, absolutely. I think, I think we see with our eyes Penn State has beaten the hell out of two teams in a row. Okay? Yeah. And we saw Iowa struggle a couple weeks in a row. And now we have a perception that this team is substantially better than this team. And I think they're probably closer than than we think. I, I could be wrong, and Pitt State might come in there, blow the doors off them. And, and what's the, the fun word? <laughs> Molly Wapham? Yeah, Molly Wapham. Just out, out, <laughs> out dude them because they can. Out athlete them because they can. But I, Kurt Ferentz is a Hell of a football coach. I mean, there's a reason he's been there for as long as he's been there. And and I, going on a whim, just spitting in the wind, whatever you want to say, I'm three weeks straight. I, 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 got, I got spanked one week. I pushed last week. Listen, they went three quarters. They put up 28 points against Purdue. Then they went three quarters, and they scored a garbage time touchdown in the last, like, three minutes of a game. Yeah, up to, to get the push. Yes, to get the push. Yeah. The push. I'm telling you, if Purdue's defense was able to slow them down, Iowa's defense is going to gonna give them some trouble. You taking Iowa straight up? I think I'm going to pull the upset. I'm calling for the upset. I know, I know it's stupid because Penn State has looked crazy good the last two weeks. And all season, really. I mean, they had one mediocre game against Pitt, but they still came away with the win. I think, I, I think I'm going to piss off the Big Ten because the Big Ten really wants Iowa, Penn State and Ohio State to be undefeated yeah, they do. when they play because that would bring a mega number. Oh, it absolutely would. And if one of them has a loss, it'll hurt it bad. I, I think I'm going to roll Penn State here. Okay. I think I, Penn State's I, got more athletes. I, I think I saw some stuff from that Penn State offensive line I think that that's I did not the, like. I think that's the Iowa State, you mean, offensive line? Iowa's offensive oh, line? Oh, from yeah. Iowa's offensive Yeah, sorry. No, from, no, yeah, from I got, Iowa's offensive I got, line. I got it. Yeah. I think I, the way that Michigan was able to get in the backfield, man, it just it scares me Ooh, to no, death. The Michigan defense is just different than Penn State's defense. Now. Oh, I, I don't think so. I do. I do. I, I'm telling you, man. We might, be, we might be different. I think you're on the right side of this, it, in all honesty. I just. Hey, you refuse to, to let them get over on you again. No, no, I'm just. It's I, like, I got to go to this well one more time. It's like whenever Had Penn I State, lost last week, I'd, uh, I might be thinking different. But I'm going in the right direction. Going, going and and I direction. just believe in Kurt Ferentz. You know that. Oh, of I, course. I, I just believe in him. And I heard an interesting topic. They've uh, had two coaches in like 50-something years? No, 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 no. That's ridiculous, by the way. Tom Fornelli. They, so the Cover 3 podcast. Okay. I don't know who those guys are. The, it's Chip Patterson, Barton Simmons, and, uh, and Tom Fornelli. They, right. they, I'll, they I'll handle stuff for 247 and CBS. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Okay. I do know them. Um, I just didn't know the names. I'm so sorry. they were going through like... Where are like where will each Big Ten coach be in five years? And like PJ Fleck, they were like uh, head coach at UCLA. Yeah, like bigger, crazy stuff. So many guys at bigger schools. For Nelly, well, not well, some at like some D'Antonio. Oh yeah, retired. retired yes, um, I got gotcha. you. You know, whatever. I'm with you. Uh, Chris Ash, like coordinator yeah. for whoever. Harbaugh in the NFL. Yeah, something yeah. like that. Um, they said James Franklin, head coach at Alabama. I, I I don't know that I would disagree if that job comes open. Franklin wouldn't be a good. He's going to be in the running for it. I I had never thought about him for that job. I think he'd be a fantastic fit. No, I don't. I don't disagree. And to to follow a legend, he's got the 
kind of the haunches and the charisma to not be afraid of that. Yeah, I mean, it, obviously, like, he didn't have to follow Joe Pa, but still, that's no. big shoes to fill at Penn State. Well, because he the, wasn't scared. the lore of Joe Pa is still there, Yeah, even though he's the second guy to follow him. No, and, it's still a big job. And at Alabama, I mean, everything's basically already in place. Yeah, you just walk in the door, say, hey, guys, I'm the new guy, calling plays and recruiting people. Nobody go anywhere. Yeah. And and the vault is still loaded. That's it's a very don't, interesting don't leave. It was a very interesting topic. Okay. I was surprised because Where do they know, have like, Kurt Ferentz still at Iowa? Uh they said he's either retired no, he's or still at, still at Iowa. He's still at Iowa. And I'm still I'm sure he probably He's absolutely be. still at Iowa. Because they were talking about if if he leaves, like maybe Bob Stoops comes back to Iowa. No I mean, chance. It, it, he's an alum. No chance. Doesn't so, matter. I don't know. No chance. It you was it who, was an interesting topic. You know who's an Iowa alum? Who might come back? If he doesn't really enjoy his time with New England Patriots? Oh, Bielema. Right? Oh, 100%. 100%. I, I still can... love Brett. Oh, I still man, love yeah. Brett. Of course. Arkansas should have never got rid of him. I love that man. <laughs> let's uh, let's move on to the last of the, uh, the top five big games. Okay. And this one might shock people. Washington State at Arizona. State. Now... That's all right. Yeah, at Arizona State. Man, it's getting too late. I know. I know, bud. Arizona State is a one-point underdog in this game. Total is 58.5. Seemed seemed like a lot of points, maybe, but maybe not with Washington State. I don't know. 2.30 p.m. on the Pac-12 network. So nobody's going to be able to watch this stupid game. game. Arizona State, 6-1 straight up and against the spread. Their last seven at home against Washington State. Washington State two and three against the spread. Their last five as a road dog. Arizona State, however, two and four as a home favorite since Herm got there. They have not done well covering the number. Um, and this way, well, and see, I've got these as a road dog and as a home favorite because the line switched on me at the last minute. But it doesn't matter when it's a pick 'em game. It's a it's a it one really point matter. game. It's a pick 'em game. College doesn't have ties. So Turn, turnover margin. Washington State number one hundred nine in the country. That doesn't shock me. They turn the ball over like it's going out of style. That's right. That doesn't surprise me. Arizona State number 35 in that metric. Points per play margin. I want to know how much, if you could take out the UCLA debacle, how much does that affect it? How many turnovers they have in that game? Seven? Now they had six in that game, and they got six. two back. Or no, got one back. One back. So, so they're, pl- they're minus, minus five. five in that game. That, so that, that affects that number pretty drastically. Yeah, it probably so does. So you just have one shit game. And, and it blows your whole metric system because you've only got five games to be judged anyway. But I am curious, like, because I don't know what it was. I think they turned the ball over several times against Utah. And no, they probably did. Utah's a hell of a football team. They're a tough team. That wouldn't shock me. Let's see. Turnover margin. Since they are number 109. I'm going to tell you, to I really hate that I'm not going to get to watch this game. I hate it because we like both these coaches. Now, I worship at the feet of Leach. That's a different level than liking Herm Edwards. I like Herm a lot. I, I worship Leach. I cannot see Leach losing three games in a row. That They've had a bye week. He fired his D.C. I think, I think Washington State is going to finish the rest of this season with their butthole on fire, and I think it's going to be really hard to beat them from here on out. I don't know how it's going to look. I don't know what's going to happen. I know that Leach is a phenomenal football coach. I think, I think and you're right. And he was real down on his team. And yeah. if those kids respond, which I think they will because I think they trust him enough to not be upset and crawl into a shell because he went on national TV and called them out. Um, but And he took a lot of onus. He talked about the coaching bad, and we got to get better also. I, I absolutely think – of the rest of the season, they are going to be a tough, tough out. Now, we'll say this. Let, let's talk about points per play margin. Okay. Washington State number 33, Arizona State number 29. Yards per play margin, Washington State number 28, Arizona State number 35. Now, that includes both offense and defense put together. As good as Washington State is on offense, Arizona State is at almost as good on defense. Okay. So I think that they will be up to the task here. They're at home. I mean, remember, Arizona State's only got one loss. I, yes. Like, I, no, Arizona State's a good football team. Really Herm good Edwards is a tough coach. Like, that team's not going to be caught off guard with this. It It's just a numbers thing for me. 
it just had had Washington State won one of those last two games, I would probably feel different about this. This is just a I can't see them losing three games in a row. They've had two weeks to prepare, coming off of two horrific losses. I am curious that's, if that's it. It's it's just a feel of I trust Leach. So I was listening to Chris Landry, and Chris Landry brings up that you know Tracy Clay's the defensive coordinator. Yep, resigned. True. And he did it, like, and it, it wasn't anything crazy. He was tired of working with Mike Leach. Yep. And that offense does not set up a defense to be successful. That's right. That and, is very, it's very hard. We and what they've been able time. to do over the last couple of years with that defense is pretty ridiculous. Yes. Now, they've played well in spite of the fact of having... Basically, the offense, you know, keeping under, them on the field all the time. Yeah, like it, it, when when they like you're up forty, what forty nine to seventeen or forty two to seventeen against UCLA. Yeah, and you can't play ball control even a little bit. That's right. Like that's just that's that's bad, bad news, bad juju. Um, the line opened at minus two and a half, moved to minus three, dropped back to minus two and a half, and then. Now this was at the line has moved. So this much. was at two p.m. That's right. And now it is Arizona State plus one, and I liked it at minus two and a half, yeah. and it moved against me. Well, I mean, I think if you like them to win the game, you got to at least take the yeah, field you got to take. Yeah, I mean that's that's just natural. That didn't surprise me. The analytics have Arizona State minus five point two one. Um, which way are you leaning on this? You, you're going Washington State, right? Um. Yeah, yeah, I'm going. Oh, no, yeah, that's not a good question. I'm sorry. I, I shouldn't be ho hum in that. Yeah, I like Leach. Okay. That's, I'm, I'm going, obviously, Arizona State to win the game, uh, which means they'll cover. So, I'll, uh, yeah, I'll go with that. I mean, I just, I, I, I think Arizona State is a really, really good football team this year. I think Jaden Daniels is going to be able to move the football on them. And I think that their defense will be able to slow down Washington State. I don't, I don't know that I disagree with that at all. Let's move into the rapid fire segment. Come on. We got a bunch of them because there are some really interesting games this week. We're going to start with the one on Wednesday night. App State travels to Lafayette against Louisiana. These are two fantastic football teams. Like, this is, I'm telling you, it's the only game that will be on on Wednesday night. That's right. So make sure you tune in. Really piss your family off by just having Tuesday as the only night off. Yeah. And that'll be fine. It'll be okay because it's football season. Everybody should know by now. Uh, App State, undefeated, got a chance to be the, the group of five uh, representative in the New Year's Six games. Now, obviously, there's a lot more season to go. Yes. But now, look, they they were 2-0 and o against Louisiana Lafayette last year, but 0-2 against the spread against them. Now, they played them in the, in the Sun Belt Championship game as well. Correct. Man, this Louisiana team is different. I agree with that. They've got one loss on the season. That was to Mississippi State. They only lost by 10 in the first game of the year. Since then, they have been dominant. Yes. This is a fantastic – Billy Napier has got this thing turned. He'll be an SEC head coach soon. I, I agree with that. Yeah. I think he's really good, and yeah. And their offense. Holy mackerel. <clears throat> I'm telling you, this is nuts. So, Billy Napier, Eli Drinkwitz, uh, two fantastic football coaches. Uh, two fantastic programs. These offenses will be crazy, but the defenses are actually really good too. There's there's good players. These are well coached teams. Make sure you watch this game. Next up, Memphis, a six point favorite at Temple. The line opened up four. I it dropped down to three, and then it bounced up to six. I think that's too many points. I agree. We like this Temple team a lot. They're tough. It's, They're gonna like be I love the out. Memphis team. No, we do too, and I think they can win the game. But I think that's too many points. At six is it, it looks crazy to me. I agree, and, and the fact that it's bounced so much is so weird to me. Uh, Memphis running back Kenneth Gainwell. This dude has better numbers right now than Daryl Henderson had, which was ridiculous. He is in the top ten as far as rushing leaders. Mike Norvell's putting putting folks in the lead. Oh, one hundred percent. This kid, true this is a different Memphis team. This, this kid's a freshman. He's top ten in rushing. In all of college football, he's got 100 less carries than the number one guy. Yeah. And he's got 15 less carries than anybody else in the top ten. He is ridiculous. 
So if you're going to watch it, tune in and see whether or not this guy can run on Temple's defense. I was just about to say, this is going to be a defense to, to see can he play or not. Yeah, I Temple's mean, Rod, Rod Carey's, like, one, Jeff Collins already built this defense up. That's right. And when he left, they brought in another defensive the de- guy. Defensive dude. With Rod right. Carey from Northern Illinois. Um, it, look, Temple, they'll be up for this game. That's it's 11 right. a.m. It's it's in Philly. Like it, it, Memphis, they're going to have their hands full. I agree with that. USC at Notre Dame. Uh, this one, I can't believe this isn't one of the big games. That's well, I just think, crazy. I think Arizona State, Washington State was a, a more I, meaningful game. I do, too. There, this is a blue blood program. And it, there's a strange thing. That's an 11-point line. All of our big games, except for Iowa, Penn State, are all double-digit lines. Yeah. But they're big-name programs. And... I'm I'm okay with the Washington State Arizona would, State being there. Would it shock you to see any of these double digit dogs in these big time matchups uh, get a win? Yes. Like just just to get one. Yes. Like A and M over Alabama, can't, Texas over can't Oklahoma. See that. Can't see that. Florida over LSU. Can't see that. USC over Notre Dame. Can't see that. I think you're probably right. now. Now there's a reason they're big dogs because it's hard to envision those teams winning those games. Yeah. Now, and if you ask me which one has the best opportunity, I think it's Texas. Yeah. And I don't, I can't see it from the other one. Now, I'm sure that's a lot of LSU bias, and there's no question that probably 30 to 40 percent of the country could easily see Florida winning the LSU game. That's fine. That's okay. But I can't, and I absolutely can't see the Alabama Notre Dame games are the ones that I just don't see it happening. Yeah. I think those two teams. Are head and shoulders better than the others, and Notre Dame. I don't think it's going to be close. I think if the Notre Dame LSU Alabama lines were flipped, I, I would still I would still take Notre Dame. Yeah, I can believe that. I can believe that. I just think they're that much. I think better they're than I, USC. Yeah, I think that's a fantastic football team. I think that USC. Uh, the one thing that they do well is pass the ball, and ain't nobody throwing it on. In Notre Dame, Notre Dame. You, you just can't throw it on them. They're um, just their front seven is too good. Yeah, their I agree. front seven gets after people, and on offense, yeah, they'll, USC, they'll create some USC's numbers. got dudes on defense, on on their defensive front. But I'm gonna tell you what, they're not close to Georgia's dudes. This offensive line is afraid of nobody. There's not a defensive front that Notre Dame will play that they're afraid of, and that I don't think they can push around. I think you're probably right. Uh, next up, Hawaii at Boise State. Love this game. Oh my God, I'm gonna I'm gonna be all over this game. I'm terrified of this. I'm terrified of it because Hawaii typically plays really bad on the road. Like whenever they come to the mainland, they don't do well. At least that's the way it has been in the past. And then a couple of weeks ago, they beat the doors off Nevada. They they've come like, to the mainland a couple of times this year and done fine. And they, yeah, they've looked okay. Um, so I just I wonder in this situation, Boise State is in prime position, and they had to make a New Year's the bye week, so it's not like. They're, you know, they're they're leaving probably at normal times. Yeah. And they're not spending time here, but they've had two weeks to get ready for this game. Yeah. No, I, you're, I, you're right. I, even if my Hawaii bet doesn't come in, I still think this is going to be a fantastic game. I don't see this being a big number. Uh, Hawaii is so much fun to watch. Yeah. It's and Boise is fun, fun to watch. Punching. Yeah. This is going to be a great football game. I agree. I agree. What night is that? What time is that? That is, oh, I didn't write it down. Um, I'm sorry. It's a good question. I should have had you prepared for that. I don't know. It's all good. I, the rapid fire, I, I rarely do, but... Uh, but well, hey. I should have known it. I can't just put it on you. Is it uh, week seven? And let's see. Here's our... 9-15. 9-15 Central Time. Sounds good to me. That'll What's it going to be on? CBS, CBS Sports know. Network? I don't have that. I just. I, I bet a CBS Sports Network. So check I'm, that back. I get that. That's going to be a fun game. It's I get a, that channel. That's okay. It, so between Memphis Temple, App State, Louisiana, Hawaii, Boise State, you got a lot of group of five stuff to pay attention to this week. That's right. Now, we got five more. Hold on. Okay. It's all good. We roll it. We'll go fast. Michigan State at Wisconsin. Any chance that the Spartans can pull an upset here? No. I, I, I hate that they're playing this game after they went to Ohio State. Yep. Like, that's that's a brutal stretch, yep. isn't it? Yep. D'Antonio's like, just, you just got to, you know, this is one of those where you just got to bite the mouthpiece down and take it. That's I mean you you go to the shoe when these and are then two to Camp these are two completely different style teams too you got a crazy fast 
crazy athletic Ohio State team that's going to put up a ton of points. They're going to throw it all over you. They're going to run. They're going to throw to open the run, and, and, and they're just going to beat you up. Now you're going to Camp Randall where these guys are just going to pound it, pound it, pound it. Michigan State takes the ball away on defense by throwing the football, by teams throwing on them. Yeah. That ain't happening in this game. No, you're right. Wisconsin's not going to put the ball in the air. And when they do, they're going to be wide open because you've been just hitting the mouth, hitting the mouth, hitting the mouth over and over again. What time it's it's going to get ugly. What time is this game? Uh, I believe this 11 a.m. game. Oh, that, that bothers me. Why, why would that bother you? I want a night game at Camp Randall. Let's see. Oh, this one is... I guess I'm glad because... Oh, no, no, no. It's a 2.30 it's game. Okay. I'm good at that. Which is which it's it'll so be terrible. nighttime by the, the end of the game. Yeah. And I get to watch it in the LSU game. The, uh, the Hawaii-Boise State game is actually ESPN 2. I'm fi- as long as it's not a channel I don't get, I'm happy. Yeah. So you'll, or you'll on the plus. So. Florida State at Clemson. 27-point line here. Any chance? Because obviously Clemson ain't look good. Florida State has been looking a little bit better. There's still, there's still so many problems with that coaching staff, though. Look, I got to tell you. Uh, Two weeks to prepare, they, too. Clemson had a bye week after a really close one. Yeah, win. they'll probably. They'll I, probably I think out. they're going to come out pissed off and ready to make a statement because they've been dropping in every poll yeah. and they haven't lost. And and I think if there's a team that's going to be pissed off, then that's. They, uh, they asked Kendall Bryles about the two quarterback system at Florida State. Okay. Do you remember earlier in the year, Willie Taggart said, I don't know. You're going to have to ask the offensive coordinator. That's right. I don't know. Like he, he calls the plays. I don't know. That's right. So then they were talking to Kendall Bryles about the two quarterback system with Hornybrook and uh, and James Blackman, and they, and he said, "Well, I don't I don't know anything about that. It's whoever Willie wants in at quarterback. Like he goes on and puts him in. Nobody wants to take responsibility. Everybody for this is doing team. this right here. Yeah, this, this is ain't not me. This ain't my party. This ain't my barbecue. You know who can't do that though." The head coach. Now, I will tell you, by Kendall saying that, that might make it hard to get another job. Because if you're another head coach, unless he gets a, a head coaching job, if you're another head coach, it's hard to bring in an OC that just willing to say, man, bro, you're you going to leave your head coach out, out to dry? Now, it's... Well, this is after the head coach left him I, out to dry. I, 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 I get that, but when you're in an interview and the head coach is talking to you, he, he doesn't care what the, head, the other head coach did. He just knows that you didn't respond the way I would have wanted you to respond. Well, I'll tell you this. It was going to be tough for Kendall to get jobs anyway. Um, I mean, it, all, it has been ever since all the Baylor fiasco. People that are desperate will hire him no matter what. I, I don't disagree with that. Because he, he can flip around an offense. So, in Florida State, they have put up points this year. No, they have, they have improved greatly. Yeah, they have put up points. All right, last three, Washington at Arizona. Washington looked like complete garbage. And here they go on the road again, Pac-12 after dark. Uh, I don't, I don't know what to, I don't know what to think here. I, I think that they should beat Arizona, but Khalil Tate's healthy. I don't know. And Khalil they Tate look, changes. they look good, man. They've looked good without him. They've looked good with him. I, I, I think Arizona's just kind of a weird up and down team. I think Washington's a weird up and down team. I said this week after last week and the last couple of weeks of chaos that I'm just going to bet all the Pac-12 dogs. I'm just gonna stay away. This uh, this game kicks off at 10 p.m. Central Time, and I won't be watching this. ESPN didn't even list a network. I won't. I won't be watching this. And they they list every network. It has so to be I'm, Pac-12 network. Oh no, it's FS1. Oh, then 10 be p.m. on, on FS1. Everybody can watch this. Don't watch this. Watch Hawaii Boise State. Yeah, I agree. It'll with be that. way more fun. I promise you. That. And it'll probably be over sooner. It's always a good thing. Get a little sleep. Friday night, you got Virginia going to Miami. Look, Miami is a two-point favorite here. And a lot of that has to do with yards per play and all that kind of mess, all these different metrics, uh, which Miami has not been terrible in. But as far as turnover margin, all that kind of stuff, as far as the tougher team, the team that I trust more, the coach that I trust more. No doubt. It is Virginia all day. I, I This is a gambling pick of mine. I like Virginia. I love Virginia. Don't like them. Love them. I love Bronco Mendenhall. He's now, Bryce on, Perkins just is is a game changer. Oh, totally. He yeah. he went on the road, and the only time he's looked bad the entire season was against Notre Dame. 
fantastic, Notre Dame team. Yeah, and it was it was only because they couldn't block them. No, like, and that was a night game at Notre Dame, man. That's a tough place to play. Yeah. Guess who's not a tough place to play? Miami, Miami right now. Ain't nobody going to be there. Ain't nobody, especially after losing to Virginia Tech at home. No, man, that crowd, they might roll in around the third quarter. Maybe. See what's going on. Buy an expensive beer and a hot dog and get out. Last one, Friday night, Colorado at Oregon. This line is 20 and a half. Seems like a lot, but I think LaVisca Chenault's not going to be there. Uh, this Friday night spot has not been good for the favorites here recently. But. Yeah, those are all road teams. 20 home and a half. Teams. Kind of, well, no, it, it, like, Cal was a home team against Arizona State. And, what, the one after that, I forget who it was. But, yeah, it, it happens frequently. Utah, I don't, know, however, if they, I don't know if they cover 20 and a half, but I don't think Colorado's winning this game. I don't think they are either. I think Oregon is on a mission. Like, they, they realize at this point, oh, wait a minute, we are the best team in this conference. We are the best team in this conference. And, and now we just got to take care of business. And I think they'll do that. Quit dicking around with these teams. Beat you got that right. Beat them up. Beat them up. All right, that's going to wrap up the college football week seven big game previews. As always, head over to winningcureseverything.com. Make sure you enter the football picks contest for the week. Uh, we'll have some great prizes from Tunica, Mississippi for that. And of course, the show brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They got six wonderful sports books. You can go check them out over at tunicatravel.com. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that subscribe button, leave us some comments, tell us what you think about the show. Picks you like, picks you don't like, etc. cetera. Uh, and if you're on Apple Podcast, if you would, so kindly, leave us a five-star review written. And if you want us to, to read it on the show, if you want to put a question in there, something else, knock that out. We will read it on the show. Go over to Apple Podcasts and leave a five-star review for us on the Winning Cures Everything podcast. We will see you guys again next week. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.